in this video I'm going to show you how to test multiple pages in bulk uh, using Google PageSpeed Insights. So it's easy enough just to come to Google PageSpeed, Google PageSpeed Insights and just do one page. But what if you want to do every page on a website without doing them one by one? How do you accomplish that? So what you do is you get Screaming Frog. Screaming Frog is a wonderful tool. I use it for all of my uh, SEO audits. Um, I'll just give you a, just a quick idea of what's going on. So you run a scan. Let me just run a scan. And I'm going to keep this video real basic. I'm not going to get into all the intricacies of Screaming Frog, of PageSpeed Insights, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, just going to show you how to set it up, and you can go, give you the basics and go from there. So you can see Screaming Frog does stuff like show you um, the page titles, um, title lengths, the meta descriptions, the H1s, the H2s, the images, and you can sort by size to see all the, the large images on the website, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of what Screaming Frog is. It's a really, really cool tool. So all you have to do is, first of all, you need to go to this website. And I'm not a Google Cloud person, so there might be an easier way or a more efficient way of doing this, but this is how I do it. So first of all, and I'll put these URLs in the description below. First thing you need to go, do is go here. And you'll need to sign in with your Google account. If you don't have a Google account, just get one. And the next thing you need to do is click on create project. Now you want to give it like uh, if you're if this is Google PageSpeed Insights and you're doing it for a website called like dogpound.com, just do something like that. I'm just gonna do Nors. And if you're if you're if you're really heavy into the Google Cloud pl platform, you might have organizations and stuff. You can set that up here. I don't do it because, like I said, I'm I'm not really a Google Cloud user. I'm just doing it to get the API key. So you do create, and that's going to put. You can see over here it's creating it over here on the right. Why that's happening? Let me get this other URL, and you can see it put it right here. Now, there may be a way to get to what I need to from within here. I just don't know. So I go to this second URL, which will be in the description below. Click on Get API Key, or I guess it just says Get Key. And I'm going to delete this key. So if you steal it, it's not going to do you any good. Select the project you just created. Next. And so this is your API key right here. So you just need to copy it. Clicking on over here, or I guess you could just do this, right-click, copy, whatever. Go into Screaming Frog. Now, Screaming Frog is a paid tool. I think it's cost me 150 bucks per year. Um, you, um, you might be able to do this with the free version, and I think the free version is limited to 1,000 URLs, perhaps. Maybe it's 100. I think it's 1,000. Now, with the API, there's a daily limitation on the API. Um, I've never hit it. I think it's like 25,000 requests. It might be 2,500 requests. I don't know. So just keep that in mind, too. So all you got to do is go to Configuration. API access, PageSpeed Insights, and enter the API key here, then click Connect. And after it gets that, before showing you the results, before starting the scan, I'm going to show you so you get connected. You also can, if you're using Majestic, Ahrefs, or Moz, I'm not using any of those right now, you can connect Google Search Console. You just come here and do connect. Account. I'm already connected. Actually, I'm not connected, so let me do it. It's going to come here. Click on the Google account you're using. And if you need help with this, feel free to um, just put in, I read all comments on YouTube. I can, I can certainly help you out. It's pretty straightforward, but if you need help, let me know. So it says verified, so just... Close the tab, go back here, and then you select the property. So we're going to do norser.me, okay. It's the same thing for Google Analytics. I'm going to show you the kind of, the, I think we just did Analytics, right? No, no, we didn't do Google Analytics. So we're going to go to Google Analytics. Connect. allow and so you first have to have your website configured in google search console and configured in google analytics right so go here and then okay so let's make sure that configure that seemed kind of weird okay google analytics is connected and i'll show you why what you can do with this stuff google search console is connected and we're going to confirm 
PageSpeed Insights is connected, which it is. So Google Analytics is, you know, analytics for your website, how many views you're getting, what pages are going to, what's the demographics, et cetera, et cetera. Google Search Console is the search dashboard for Google Search, right? So that's what that is. So we're going to go ahead and click on Start. Now, if you didn't have these eight, this API, these APIs configured, all you would have with this would be this crawl percentage. But you can see over here on the right, there's also an API crawl percentage. So what I'm going to do is sort here. Like, I don't want to see all this JavaScript and stuff or all this, you know, this CSS like right here. So what I'm going to do is just do HTML only. So the HTML, HTML only. So that's going to show me uh, only uh, web pages. And you can see here it's still going. But all you do, so you can, this is the kind of stuff that it, is it indexable, the title of the page. And this page has not been optimized. Meta description stuff robot stuff but as you can see this is some linking information so this is an api stuff here this is just standard stuff but as we move along this is google analytics stuff and you, this should all be populated if it's getting any views and this website's new so it's probably not getting any views how many google analytics sessions new users etc cetera, etc cetera, that'll all be populated um google analytics stuff this is coming from Google Search Console. So how many people are clicking your website from within Google Search, right? Not none here. How many impressions? How many times is this page? I'm not going to scroll the way back over, but that page, how many times is it showing up in the search results, right? Now you can go learn about Google Search Console if you want. This is PageSpeed Insights I want to get onto. So this is performance score, right? It's like a weighted average of, of the Core Web Vitals. Okay, I'm done with the video, but I forgot to cover something. So I'm going to add it here in the middle of the... Um, recording. So if you go to configuration, API access for analytics, search console, and page speed insights, you can, you can filter things. So in Google analytics, you can do date range metrics. So you can say, I want to also show AdWords info. You can do the site speed here within Google analytics, if you wanted to, um, social interaction. So you can see there's all kinds of stuff you can track specific session info metrics, uh, dimensions. So there's all kinds of dimension stuff. If you don't know what this stuff is, um, and a lot of it I don't because I'm not a heavy Google Analytics, user, Google Analytics user. Don't worry about it. Also, let me just show you. Search Console has its own things. Date range, dimension general, then dimension filter. This is all useful because if you only want to see mobile th scores, do that. If you want to see only from USA or whatever, you can sort by country, right? Now, I've never done with Majestic's AREFs or MOZ, so they probably have their own, but PageSpeed Insights. There's all kinds of speed metrics you can record and it gets to be overwhelming but you can see remove on yes css savings let's, let's go so speed index score you can show that time to first byte score that's actually pretty important um first meaningful paint time so there's all kinds of things you can track i generally just do between i actually i just take the defaults um if i need to get any more information if i want to go to if i basically what I do is I, if I see a page that is ranking low, then I'll just go plug it into web page test and look at the waterfall chart there. So anyway, back to the video. So when I say core web vitals, the three you really want to focus on are largest contentful paint, cumulative layout shift, total block time. Largest contentful paint has, has to do with how long it takes the largest, generally the image to, uh, to display on your website. Cumulate layout shifting has to do with things shifting around as the page loads and after the page loads. And then blocking times are scripts blocking one another. And I'm going to do a video on, if you want me to actually, if you want me to do a video on web page test and waterfall charts, just leave a comment. I'd be happy to do it. Um, but basically this, these orange things means these, this, this, these scripts and the CS is blocking other things. But anyway, so you can see here, this is the first content. So for my website here, it shows First contentful paint, largest contentful paint, time to interact, blocking time, cumulative layout shift. So it's this one, this one, I'm sorry, this one, total blocking time and cumulative layout shift are the three on web page test. So you can just go here. You can click on it and you can export this out to a spreadsheet. So you can do the ones with the largest content. Now, the best thing you might want to do is performance score. <coughs> And these are the best. So go to one that are the slowest. So this is a 42. So this is one I might want to look at. Like, this is five second, a little over five seconds, speed index, um, seven seconds, contentful paint, time to interact. So this is from the live test. This is coming from Lighthouse, um, from PageSpeed Insights, right? This is from the live test. Now, if you keep going, there's all what I, 
Generally, you want your web pages to be under two to three meg. So another thing you can do is click on page size. If you see any page sizes that are really large, it's something you want to go to. Also, requests. Now, every, every website's different, but I don't like websites to have more than 100 requests. So what a request is, is basically each one of these is a request. Each one of these things loading. These are all the things that are loading on your web page, right? So let's do that. So that's that. Now... It actually didn't get the crux information. Oh, it's because crux is lab data or is real user performance. This is not a popular web page, so it doesn't, it's not, there's no, Google hasn't gathered any real data. And you can see that from here, field data does not have sufficient real world speed data. Um, so this is um, actually people from all around the world visiting your website. So if you go to a more popular website, you can see that they have it, like field data for Verizon for mobile, for Twitter, for YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. So what you might notice is these scores seem really, really bad. It takes four seconds to do a first contentful paint on your homepage. But if you go to the website, it loads pretty quickly. Right. So why does it do that? So it's because for, I think it's kind of I don't I think it's strange. I think it's a little misleading. But as I understand it, the tests are actually throttling the speed down to like one point five megabits per second. So that's you're always going to get slow scores. So what I did, I loaded up some. So you so my mobile score is 81 and my desktop is 94. That's actually really good. I just did a few random, very popular web pages. So you can see it's very, very difficult to get 100s or even all greens. So Verizon, look, four. Desktop, 11. So that's, you know, that if, if it was that big of a deal, they would be spending more time on it. Um, Twitter, 67, 84. I think that's more reasonable, right? I think this is a little extreme. 11s are a little, there's generally things wrong if it's an 11. But these are just general guidelines. You, I, the, the test I like to run is web page test, and I really just focus focus on these. Even though I have it configured to go using a non-mobile, and I know that Google indexes on mobile, and I get that, but I just don't get too hung up on, on these scores because they're really impossible uh, in most cases to, to get to all green. Um, so Twitter, so you look at you. So even Google's YouTube is a 40, mobile's a 43, right? Amazon, 79, so 58 and 79. Facebook, 82. In 100, so they did get a 100. Um, so that's that. So I hope hope you found this useful. Um, I could get into a lot more detail about all these metrics, but um, there's other videos on YouTube that talks about Screaming Frog, um, and you can get into specifically if you want to know how the speed score is measured and all that stuff. But this will just give you a general idea. Go look at the ones that have the the slowest scores. Let's say you have one that shows 10 seconds and you'll get that by going to, you know, speed, speed score or whatever. That's and if it's like a 30 or something, that's definitely probably going to be a problem. Um, so if you have a largest contentful paint, that's like 12 and you'll get it by sorting up here on the largest contentful paint column, uh, then that's probably one you want to go investigate. So then what you do here, if you wanted to, is you can export it to a spreadsheet and then you can delete all these extra columns and all that stuff. So I hope you guys found this useful. If there's any, if you want me to go into more detail, I use web page tests for everything. I really don't even pay attention to Google PageSpeed Insights uh, much anymore. Let me just, and I'll put this link here um, in, let me do this so I don't forget, in down below. But it basically talks about why these scores don't matter. Um, these, all these scores and why you should not get too, now this is from an older, um, I think GT Metrics has changed it up again, but you don't want to get too hung up on these. What you want to focus on is actual load time for human beings and then the web, the core web vitals. Um, is it web core vitals? I always get it mixed up. Core web vitals, I think it is, because that's what Google was using for um, SEO, for search engine ranking purposes, to... Um, to determine the performance of the website. Now it's just one, I'm assuming we don't know. It's Well, we do know it's one factor out of hundreds. And I, I think if a website loads, if one, site, one website loads in two seconds and another one loads in three seconds, it's probably not that big of a deal. You're probably running into a, problems and you're gonna have ranking issues if your website loads in 12 seconds or eight seconds. 
But if you go if you go from two to three or one to two point five or even two to four, I don't think it probably is that big of a deal. Can't say that for sure, but that that that's that's my opinion. So I'll put this read through this. This this just explains why you don't want to get carried away with the scores. Focus on core web vitals. Focus on actual load time. And if there's anything you want me to go into more detail on, let me know. And subscribe, like, please. The more subscriptions I get, and the more likes I get, the more videos I do. I do WordPress. I do security. I do performance and SEO stuff. So is there anything you want on those topics? Let me know and I'd be happy to do it.